I grew up mostly watching shows about Batman. I liked watching him stop bad guys, I liked watching him use his gadgets, I liked watching him be a hero. And I've always loved heroes, and my parents knew that. But of course, like how my mom still calls my Xbox a PlayStation after 10 years, they didn't know the difference between them. So for my birthdays, when I got action figures, DVDs, and even comics given to me, I would get Superman, because to them, he was THE superhero. And even though I only had maybe one or two of those comics, I would read them over and over when there was nothing else airing on TV. Because, you know, cable used to exist. Now I can't actually remember what specific comics I had. I can't even remember what villains he was fighting. I can't remember what was happening at all. But what I can remember is how they made me feel. And as cliche as it sounds, he made me feel hopeful. But outside of those comics, I couldn't really point to you any proper representations of the Blue Boy Scout that made me feel the same way. I know there was the OG animated series, but as a kid in the late 2000s, there wasn't anything Superman airing on TV. Except Smallville, but I didn't know about that, shut up. As I got older, we only got attempts at subverting Superman. Whether that was Snyder's edgier version, the evil one, the evil one, the evil... Huh. But after all these years of being unable to recognize the character, my adventures with Superman brings me back to those comics my mom used to buy me. This show is just great. In fact, it's super. It's Superman. It's just Superman. There's no needless twist that no one asked for. I mean, the most insane change in the show on the Superman mythos is Tomboy Lois, and the internet sure seems to be loving that. Maybe, maybe a little too much. Which brings me to a big point. For the last decade, there have been way more attempts on dark twists of Superman than just straight up normal depictions, and so many writers seem to have just accepted that. But Superman doesn't need to be super complex in terms of morality. He doesn't need to be a super powerful god. He doesn't even need to be... He just needs to be Clark Kent. And that's what the show's more about. Most of the screen time is spent on Clark, not Superman, because it's just as much an origin story of the good-hearted reporter as the Man of Steel. And it is an origin story. From the episodes released so far, it's clear he's only just moved to Metropolis, he's only just met Jimmy and Lois, and he's only just beginning to understand his powers. You can sort of see some anime influence here, because this is basically just a shonen setup. You got the three leads, the gradual unlocking of abilities, I mean, look at this intro, man. I mean, hell, he even powers up when he needs to because of the power of friendship. But that makes sense, because what makes Superman himself isn't just his powers, it's his heart. And nothing shows that off better than the people around him. The new series is called My Adventures with Superman, and I can only assume the other person in question is Lois Lane. This is the kind of relationship that you'll see endless fan arts and clips about on YouTube. And it is. Jesus Christ, please stop! It helps that unlike in so many other superhero romances, she's ridden with her own arcs and developments that not only work well by themselves, but also coincide and intertwine with Clark's, pushing them both towards learning about themselves through each other. Honestly, you could probably call this show Superman and Lois- Oh wait. Oh, also, Jimmy's here. Yeah. Again though, it's interesting to note how much time is actually spent with these characters. Most modern Superman depictions, and even the original ones, always focused on the super part and less on the man. It's here where the show tries something new, moving the focus to Clark and his normal day-to-day -day life at work with Lois and Jimmy. And it manages to be even more entertaining somehow, because like Clark and Lois' relationship, the everyday events and Superman events complement each other perfectly, really strengthening the emotional connection we have with the characters. And it works really well, because it's really entertaining. But overall, this is just a really great incarnation of Superman. It's not godlike strength that makes him super. It's not his power to fly, his invulnerability, or even that weird time traveling logo thing. It's his heart. He's not super because he's above us, he's super because he's the best of us. And you can really see that in here. Yeah, it's cool watching a dude with powers fight other people with powers most of the time. But that's not what makes Superman cool. One of my favorite scenes in the show so far is in the second episode, where after the fight with Livewire, not only does he save the villain trying to kill him, but he also takes the time to fix everything that's been destroyed in the area. Repairing knocked down public property, fixing smashed up cars, 
and even checking on the people around them to make sure they're okay, because that's Superman. He's not just the guy that beats up villains, although he does that too. He's the guy that protects and inspires everyone else. And I wish I could have grown up with this show, because just by being himself, this depiction of Clark Kent is just such an inspirational character. Because this depiction of Clark Kent is the one that I grew up with in all those comic books. Maybe he's not the coolest or most badass hero, but that's not what people love him for. We love him because even without the powers, he's just a normal guy who wants to help everyone around him. Not because of some trauma or random motivation, but just because he believes it's the right thing. Although he himself might not be real, the ideals he stands for are, and it's nice to know that among all the new twists and dips in the superhero genre, it still has a place in it for the Blue Boy Scout.